Okay, hey, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a short video today. Um, what I found is there are things that I wanna show you um, and that I wanna share that really are kind of more tightly intertwined with my own configuration, my own personal machines configuration. Um, things like how I do bookmarks or um, how I use org mode for scheduling and things. And that's kind of hard to do in a made-up environment. Um, you know, even to like maybe later on, I'll show you how I do email, and I don't want to have to mock up an entire environment for that. It's also kind of a pain to um, switch back and forth between my Emacs configuration for these videos and my real Emacs configuration. So I thought what would be a good a good thing to do is switch over to this 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 configuration as my real Emacs configuration and then just start adding in things from my old Emacs configuration a piece at a time as I need it. Now of course there are things that I'm going to want in my configuration for personal use that I may not want to have um, on the video series until we get to it so I can do things incrementally. So I had to figure out a, a way to do that. Uh, fortunately, the configuration file is just ELISP, and we've talked a little bit about ELISP. Let's just go to the scratch buffer here for a second. Um, one of the things that what I could do is um, I could take stuff that I want in my personal Emacs file um, but not share it with the video and the GitHub stuff yet, and I could put it into another file and in Emacs, I know there's some ELISP called load file. So if I just do load file and then just, you know, some file.el, this will load that file and run that ELISP um, as if it were in this file, in the file that I'm loading it from. And that would solve my problem. Um, and in fact, I already do that on my regular Emacs configuration for things that I don't want in GitHub, uh, things that I just want on my local machine and I want to share with the world. Um, so I could just do that. So what I could do, for example, is I can come into here and I could say uh, load other files, make a new section, uh, make Emacs list, make this a little bigger. And uh, yeah. and do something like well, it's, why is that not okay? Whatever. Um, and we could do something like you know load file something .el. And the problem with that though is that'll work on my machine because I'll have something .el in my folders, but it won't work on your machines unless you have something there and you'll get an error and that's not good. So I had to figure out how can I do something conditional. Well, um, as I said in an earlier video, ELISP is just, it's a LISP, it's a programming language. It's just a little different. So, for example, in Python, you might go 2 plus 3. In ELISP, you go plus 2, 3. And I can do Control X, Control E to run that. And you see on the bottom here, it gave us a value of 5. That might be a little hard to read. Um, and just as I said before, there is something called load file. Uh, just a little Facebook notification. Um, oh, cool. Okay, and um, I hope that uh, not too personal. Well, it doesn't seem personal. Um, and I will respond to these later on um, in a few minutes once I finish these videos. Um, but I can make an if statement to control whether what to load. So, for example, if you're in Python, you might have if some condition do this true stuff and then there might be an else part do this false stuff and the else part you might not have and you know, etc and of course you're in, in you know, if condition you know do the stuff in here and else do the stuff over here if you're programming in Java or C well in ELIS we can say if some condition like it equals to three then there's a functional message box message box it's true and the else part is going to be a message box it's false and we can run that control x control e and it's false two is not three but three <laughs> but three is three it is true okay great or we can even put i mean we can put T for true in here. It's true. 
for nil for false. Um, and so that's our conditional. And in fact, we don't really need even this false part. Nothing happens if it's not true. But if it is true, hey, it's true. So I now have an if statement, and I have a little um, something to do. And I could say, well, if the file exists, then I can load it. And I just had to figure out, how do I do that? How do I figure out if a file exists? So what I did is I just, you know, I just did a search and you know, Emacs file exists. And, you know, a couple of links that I looked at. So this first one here, I said, oh, look, file readable P. Um, so all I had to do is I could make a little function. So let's just edit it in here. Defun. Um, why don't we define load if exists, and it'll take a file name, and we'll say, no, there's no comment string in here for now, um, if file readable p of the file name, then we'll just load file f. I always forget this. There we go. Okay. Um, and so what this is going to do, it's going to make this function load file if it load if it exists. If the file is readable, if it exists and it's readable, I'll load that file. And otherwise, I won't. Um, and so we'll just, uh, let's go back into here and let's put in a couple of calls to this. Make this bigger again. And I'll say load if exists my Dropbox shared MU4E config IEL and you know temporary stuff and the stuff that's not for GitHub. So basically, so what this is going to do is I'm defining this little function and then I'll call it and say, okay, well let me load my email configuration let me load my temp stuff, which is the stuff that I'll be transitioning over, and then the stuff that shouldn't be in GitHub at all. And that'll be that. So let's exit and let's load Emacs again. And we really shouldn't see any difference. Let's go to the messages buffer. Uh, we don't see any differences um, because it all just worked. But if those files existed, um, which they will on my regular setup, it would have loaded them. So let's see, are we in for a short video? Um, yeah, seven and a half minutes, eight minutes just about. So a um, little bit on the shorter side, but I'm going to transition this over. And uh, in future videos, I'll be working on my building my live Emacs config um, and just shifting stuff over from that temp stuff or putting it in live. So um, I hope this was a little bit interesting, a little dip into uh, very much baby ELISP. Um, and I will put up this post and uh, yeah, then we'll move on to new stuff. So, um, so uh, again, leave comments. I hope you're enjoying this. Hope you're getting stuff out of this and that's it. So take care. Bye.